Okay, so welcome back to TW here. We have some more generation wrestling uh, here, and we have some bad news. Unfortunately, NXT has just increased the roster size, and you will see that there's quite a few names missing here. Sean Defy and Eddie Kingston have both signed with the development or system in NXT, and so yep, they're on. Uh, Filmental contracts, and then there was someone else who I cannot remember who else left the company. Uh, I can't remember where, but something just came up on the screen that I need to take off. Uh, that's us now. Uh, somebody else else has left the company and I can't remember who it was so I'm just gonna have a quick no uh, we'll not do a photo we'll do not burst it over a few here uh, so as you can see the arse has been ripped out of the main offense scene and really the upper mid card scene but don't worry we have a way to fix that on a second well I say on a second at the end of the show uh, who else left then uh, it was it was somebody quite big actually in the company I'm pretty sure uh, so big that I don't remember them Adam Cole still there Kyle Riley still there Moose is there who has left the company as well Eddie Kingston left Sean Defire left and someone else left um, for the life of me I cannot remember who else left. It wasn't Jonathan Gresham, he's still there, but they were... I'll find out at the end... Oh, no, actually, you know how we could find out? Uh, news off archive. Red Titus, that was it. He left, and he has now signed for... I think he extended his deal with New Japan. No, sorry. Uh, it was Red Titus went to NXT, as well as Sean Defy and Eddie Kingston was the one that extended his deal with New, New Japan, right? Either New Japan or OH. No, sorry, it was TNA. TNA he extended his uh, deal with. So I guess TNA's growing and they're uh, getting some exclusive deals here. So unfortunately, now the big blow-off match between Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly and Eddie Kingston is only going to be Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. Again, those two are going to be wrestling. But don't worry, this will be the last time for now anyway. And we'll be moving on and getting Adam Cole some more opponents. But as for uh, how I'm going to deal with this whole situation now, we are going to be spending a hell of a lot more money than what we were. But it's going to be worth it. And also, we've got 17 grand to play with. And we just keep on getting more and more to play with per show. So I'm fine uh, that way financially at the minute anyway. All we have to do is keep on putting on good shows and keep on increasing our uh, pop and we will keep on getting more and more money and we'll be fine and confident of it but we'll show you uh, after the show who all will be taking their place in the company also I have plans to push Joe Hendry a lot more let's go ahead and run the show here so we open up the show here with Arn Steven going up against Joe Hendry and Joe Hendry gets the win here and the reason for giving him the win is because this was supposed to be Arn Steven's last show with the company for now until we sign him up on another deal for next year's emergence show but instead what I've decided to do is I'm going to uh, offer Arn Stevens a contract uh, because we have spaces available now and I might as well just keep him about and start to give him a few wins and you know make him an opponent for Adam Cole at some point make him a contender in the company so Arn Steven wins that match um, oh, sorry Joe Hendry wins that match against Arn Stevens in 13 minutes 21 seconds by pinfall with a freak of nature match got the show off to a strong start the match got the crowd to a 51 and then performance there by Arn Stevens and a 24 for Joe Hendry so not bad indeed and that is the rating of 40 there, uh, segment rating of 40 so that's a good way to start the show. Then we go into another segment here at the end of that where we see Joe Hendry pick up the mic and proclaim that whoever wins the match tonight whether it's going to be the main event tonight whether it be Alan Cole or Kyle O'Reilly he will be coming after them.
for their title. So we go into the next uh, segment here where we have a triple threat match. In front of 245 people, that's pretty good. Uh, Colin Delaney, uh, Jonathan Gresham and Billy Sweet all compete in this match. And the winner of this match will go on to face Scotty Mack for the Vancouver Championship. So in about that had a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. Jonathan Gresham uh, gets the win here whenever he defeats Colin Delaney and Billy Sweet in 12 minutes 8 seconds when Jonathan Gresham defeats Colin Delaney by pinfall. A 30 mm performance by Colin Delaney, 31 for Jonathan Gresham and a 23 for Billy Sweet. Billy Sweet really has improved quite a bit since we first started to use him. Uh, but that's a 31 minute uh, segment there, so that's not too bad. Then we go into the rematch for the Tag Team Championships as Backrow Slasher uh, attempt to get their titles back from Yoko Creed, but they feel in a decent in, in a bout that have a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. Yoko Creed go over in this one in 11 minutes, 1 second, when Nelson Creed was able to defeat Cremator von Slasher by submission. Uh, so that is defence number one of the Generation Tag Team titles. A 30 MMA performance there by Steve Blackwell. Uh, Fawn Slasher gets a 27, 33 for Nelson Creed and a 25 for the King of Yoken, uh, who is improving in his technical abilities. That's good. A 34 minute segment of all that, and that's not bad. Uh, we go into the next match though, which is a squash match between Moose and Pete Paz. And about that, had a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar worse. And we have Moose go over here against Pete Paz in 5 minutes 35 seconds by submission. Pete Pards was off his game, 45 in win performance there by Moose and a 16 by Pete Pards and this segment brought the crowd down a little. Anybody improve? Nope, didn't think they would. But then we go into the next segment here where we see a video promo back uh, from Backstage Prime where Kyle O'Reilly uh, says that he will uh, defeat Adam Cole and win back his generation championship and become a two time champion. Uh, 57 minute segment there. Not a bad radio segment into the main event, which is a 52 minute main event. In an exceptional match, Adam Cole defeats Kyle O'Reilly in 13 seconds, 20, oh, sorry, 13 minutes, 29 seconds by pinfall with a Florida key. Kyle, oh, sorry, Adam Cole makes defense number one of his generation championship. The announcing job done by Robert Green was pretty weak, yep. Uh, deserved better announcing in colour. Uh, but it did get the crowd hotter, which is good for the next couple of segments. A segment, sorry. Uh, Adam Cole had an in-run performance of 66 and a 65 for Kyle O'Reilly. And Adam Cole continue, uh, well, has his first defence of his new title reign in that match. Pretty damn good match, I'm happy enough for that. We're going to the last seg- uh, the, sorry, the second to last segment here where we see Adam Cole celebrate his victory over Kyle O'Reilly. And then after that, Joe Hendry interrupts his title celebration as he comes down, squaring off against Adam Cole, pretty much saying that he is his next competitor. And that will happen at Generation Wrestling 15. Let's go ahead and end that show there. A 48 mm performance there. Oh, sorry, a 48 uh, show uh, event rating. Sorry, uh, your sh- show appeared worse because of the live uh, live event experience was slightly worse than your, than the number one live was. That's okay, but this show did increase our popularity in all regions. Regions, sorry, which is good to see. Let's go ahead and please Moose. Let's go ahead and. We'll compliment, we'll point on Stevens out as a good example, and of course, Adam Cole, Bebe, can get a lovely uh, tool that he's awesome because he is. Moose can be praised for a great performance, and point out on Stevens as a good example. Moose seemed praised, as did on Stevens, but Adam Cole was happy. So that's going to end that there. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, we had the us ripped out of the roster there. Uh, so, but there's nothing that we can you know do about that. It's a good job that we got Eddie Kingston to drop the title to Adam Cole at the Emergence Show. I wasn't gonna have him drop the title. I didn't want him to drop the title, but uh, yeah, it's a good job that we did. Uh, 
because then we would have had quite a uh, quite a situation on our hands there. Quite annoying though when you know wrestlers just up and leave like that, especially when the champions. But thankfully there was no champions that time. Uh, let's go ahead and look here at them. But YouTube deal expiring, we will renew that in a second. Uh, Adam Cole is feeling the effects of grueling schedule. Generation Wrestling 14 got a point not free. Uh, Steve Blackwell needs to learn how to sell. The kid is not worth pushing until that's addressed. So that came from Mark Calloway, and I will definitely be taking his opinion into consideration. But for now, anyway. That, that was a good show there, and that's worth our production values all increased. That's a very good show there. 12 grand only spent on it, and uh, you can be sure as how that, that will be improving soon enough. Our broadcasting deal with YouTube is in its final month. Let's go ahead here and renew that, negotiate, and we will extend that deal for events. Can we get a... Mm, should we go for that one there? We are getting pretty decent ratings here, so let's go for a six month deal. Ah, oh, they're not willing to go with that. We're in the afternoon time slot. Mm, early evening. Not willing to go with that. Evening. Not willing to go with that. Prime time. Definitely not willing to go with that. Uh, we're going to either go for on demand or we can go with. Was it late evening that we had? No, it was late night that we had. So we'll go with a late night deal. Yes, yeah, okay. And yeah. let's go ahead and see if there's anyone else then who would be willing to negotiate. I don't think there is. I always do this, but it's just more just to, you know, in case somehow another, you know, option came up. How about you? Could could you give us a new deal? No. Yeah, fair enough. I don't really think that that would. I do this all the time, but it's just if if some if another you know company comes up that you know is able to uh, give us more a larger audience, and why not? Twenty eight thousand people watched the show there. Uh, that's more than the emergent show, so that's very very good indeed. Uh, my phone just vibrated and it is nothing important. Uh, is it important actually? Uh, let me just have a look. But uh, as I, that's loading up, let's go in here to decisions. Okay, so Tyson Dukes. Uh, is somebody who were, that we're potentially bringing in and I don't know how much money we offered him it was quite a bit of money but he's a local guy, he's from Canada so I thought, thought I'd bring him in Steve, Crazy Steve as well, somebody else from Canada I believe so that's why I decided to bring him in Eric Young, another Canadian and Sammy Callahan is not Canadian but I thought I'd bring him in anyway uh, I would like to increase our the numbers of Canadian workers here, but unfortunately, they're not that great of workers. Uh, well, no, and not that they're not that great of workers, but to get the good ones, you have to spend a lot of money, just like with anywhere else, really. But uh, we do tend to get better wrestlers from America, unfortunately, uh, and not even better wrestlers, just wrestlers that want to push more. Uh, that, that I think would be a better, you know, candidate for the company. And Stevens has major morale issues, which means he probably won't negotiate. Nope, because he's not happy in GW. But that's fine. You can fuck off then, and then we'll bring you back in at some point. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's a decent amount of money that we're going to be giving these people. You know, it is quite a lot of money. So like Tyson Dukes is, he's more than a grand. I know that. As for Crazy Steve, is just under a grand. I think Eric Young is over a grand. I think he's like fifteen, fourteen hundred ish, and Sammy Callahan is like seventeen hundred. 
but as I say I'm, I'm fine with that because we are making money and the better the shows we put on the more money we seem to be making and that is just going to continue to be the case I think uh, but let's go ahead and look at the company wars window uh, while we broke side to stay with WWE how much money would you be able to bring in because uh, how much money would you be to bring in he's not active in Canada but if he if we could bring him in as a personality for you know, maybe a grand then that'd be fine Tamatonga signed for TNA is that on that is another written deal TNA is signing a lot of written deals uh, retirement for Ray oh okay Iron Man Adam Core. Some insiders have become worried that the recent schedule of Adam Core, who they believe is pushing himself too much. Some Fertmans are predicting that he doesn't take some time to heal. We may uh, see him fall victim to injury. Uh, okay. Open up this window and we'll look. Look, it's physical. Yeah, he is pushing big time, and he. He's not under injury yet, but he, he could become injured. Uh, I, I'm i not somebody who wants to see wrestlers walk through injuries. Uh, I, I don't agree with wrestlers walking through injuries. But damn, I have respect for a wrestler who walks through an injury. Like, I, I don't want to ever see a wrestler have to walk through an injury. I think he'll never walk through an injury. If you are injured, take time off and work but I have so much respect for a wrestler who still somehow is able to work through one uh, but as I say I don't I never want to see a wrestler work through an injury it's no way uh, 26th in the world now so that's pretty damn good we have grown big time here uh, so let's see then uh, where is TNA TNA is 8th and they're, they're signing big deals, they're signing a lot of written deals. Let's go ahead and look at the roster and we'll see who's all under a written deal here. Uh, Felter, contract type is written. Yeah, Devon, Dixie Carter, well, yeah, she's the she's put down as the owner of the company, right? Uh, Don Haas, uh, Eddie Kingston, who costs quite a bit of money, Tamatonga, uh, Stu Sanders as well is under a written deal, so there's quite a few uh, sort of expensive names there, not necessarily huge names, but expensive names that are under a uh, written deal there. So is Tonga Roa in the company then? If you know, if they have Tama Tonga. I would assume that they would bring in his tag team partner. Let's go ahead and look at the teams. Uh, no, okay. That's quite strange. I, I was actually just thinking about bringing in the Gorillas of Destiny uh, to the company if they worked in Dingy, if they worked in. Uh, Japan, but obviously that will not be the case. So we're going quite big. Oh, actually, uh, I was looking through a bunch of people who uh, I could potentially sign, and I didn't select a wrestler, but I wasn't planning on bringing them in. But this is one of the potential wrestlers who we could have brought in, and. Uh, uh, so one of the potential workers that we could have brought in. No, nope, don't care. Uh, we'll go with a star, I believe. Yep, Triple H is left WWE. I was surprised to see that. I thought they would have kept him on. Uh, he has a lot of uh, relationships there. Sean Maltman. Bring in Triple H and Sean Maltman. How much money would he be bringing? Oh no, that's too much money. I was thinking about you know potential color commentator, commentator there, but no way, no way. Nineteen hundred for commentator, not right now anyway. Uh, so yeah, those are potential wrestlers that I could have brought in, but are far too much money. Uh, Brock Lesnar's retired. No, he's semi-active. He hasn't retired just yet. But like he costs like 
I can't remember how much he cost to bring in. Yeah, 7.3. I thought he was like 5 grand, but he's 7.3 grand in appellants. And that's just like, holy hell, like, how the fuck is anybody meant to, m meant to pay that? But we'll go ahead and we'll add in Generation Wrestling 15. Generation Wrestling 15. And that will be a special. And that will happen next month in March calendar I'm thinking week two yeah let's go week two of March uh, the Sunday of course one hour long show and yeah that's that's gonna be it really see if it makes it so on that next show then what we will play book for that show is gonna be We'll go ahead and we'll put on a one-on-one -on -one match between Scotty Mack and Jonathan Gresham, right? Yeah, Jonathan Gresham. Scotty Mack and Jonathan Gresham can take each other on. Save that. We'll go ahead and we'll put in a tag team match then, I think. Um, that will be uh, between the Stallions haven't had a title shot yet in a while so we'll put them against the Stallions we do need to bring in another tag team uh, or two I do want to get in quite a big tag team to, uh, to start to push I might debut uh, Joe Hendry and Kyle O'Reilly as a tag team soon enough though uh, despite not competing yet, we also need to do an all push actually. Uh, so we're actually another play booking. We need Moose in a match. You can take on Billy Swear, he can job out to Moose. Right, uh, then we want to go in here to the roster and we need to do an auto push. So we'll auto push that, yep, okay. And Joe Hendry is back into the upper mid card, that's very good to see indeed. Now, what I am thinking about is a Joe Hendry Kyle O'Reilly tag team title run. Uh, it's either that or Alan. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly going after the Vancouver Championship, which I don't really want to do right now. Uh, although it would bring up the uh, the prestige a hell of a lot. But I'm thinking Joe Hendry uh, and Kyle O'Reilly can think about we can think about putting them into a tag team title spot possibly. Uh, but anyway, as for now, that's going to end up. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And um, yeah, see you there.